In this video, I'm going to explain how you can automate certain functions in Trello using the API. We're going to start with a quick Trello overview, explaining exactly what it is and how to use the tool itself. Then we're going to set up and configure the necessary tokens so we can authenticate against the API. And finally, we're going to create a Trello card using the API, as well as test out some other functionality. Uh, just start by going over some basics of the API. So uh, if you're not familiar with Trello, I guess I'm going to kind of give a quick overview of just the system in general. It is a project management stick. It's kind of likened to a project management system because um, they use Kanban boards, which are used a lot for project management, but uh, really it can be used for a whole lot of things. It's just a simple way to just display um, whether it's tasks, whether it's ideas. Uh, some people use this to write. I know for a while I was using this to write articles for my website and storing most of the content here, especially when I got some of my, my cooler integration set up. Um, but let me zoom in here a little bit just so this way you get a better view. So. Everything within Trello, we're gonna actually work within a team. When you sign up for Trello for the first time, this is a brand new account. Um, you have, you can create personal boards, but you can also create team boards. And the reason we're gonna create a team board is because we can get into the power up section of this. Um, it needs to be tied into a team. So that's what we're gonna do here. Uh, so I'm gonna create a board here. We're just gonna call this test board. And you can see it adds a couple of columns for you. And this is kind of an idea of a Kanban board. So you have columns, and then you have cards that can be dragged across a column. So you could say like, uh, this is my first card. And one of the cool things about Trello and that was really um, kind of unique about this system when it first came out is it's really dead simple to use and there's not a big learning curve behind it whatsoever. So uh, once a card is created, you can take cards and just basically drag them across any one of these columns. You can create new cards within the different columns. Um, I mean, it's very simple and straightforward. Uh, here is another card. You know, so you can just quickly add them and move them around. So what we're going to do today, specifically with the API, is we're going to uh, we're going to create an app. We're going to get a set of credentials that we can use to access the API, and then we're just going to go over uh, just a basic feature like how to create a card. All right, so I have a URL actually in my notes that I'm going to be using to create the um, to create the app, and but all the links that I'm going to paste into my browser are actually in the description of the live video. So if you need a quick reference to them, go ahead and grab that there. Um, it is uh, Trello, see Trello.com slash app key. So if I paste this here, okay, maybe not. It says I'm logged in. Oh, I forgot I'm using Firefox session. So let's try this again. All right, here we go. So I'm logged in and it presents this. So it's gonna give me a set of developer API keys. And this, this is what is used more or less just to kind of test access into Trello. Uh, if you wanted to create a full blown app, there's another process to, to go over it. Um, and I actually don't have that information handy, so we're not gonna be going over that today, but it's, this is really kind of more or less just a primer anyway. So this will give you an idea how the API works. Uh, so we're gonna acknowledge the terms and show the API key. Uh, so this is the API key um, that is used for my specific application that I can use to access this. Um, if you're watching this live or watching this in the, in the past, uh, this is a test account. There's no data on here whatsoever, so I really don't care. But if you ever actually do create this stuff for yourself, you want to make sure to always keep your keys and your token private because they can be used um, to access pretty much anything within your account. Uh, okay, so uh, the key is something we're going to need. So I'm going to open up a notepad instance, and I'm going to paste that key in there just so we can quickly access it later. Um, and then once we're done there, we can... I think it's just right up here. We want to manually generate a token, which is basically um, a way to identify ourselves to Trello. Okay, so it's gonna go through the process and say like, hey, do you wanna authorize this token to do whatever? And this is a list of everything that uh, the token can do, which is pretty much everything, which is, again, why you wanna keep this stuff kinda, kind of in a safe place. So I'll go ahead and click allow, and now we're gonna get our token. And these are the two pieces of information you're gonna need to access the API. Um, so I got that saved there. We got our key on the first line and we got our token on the second line. Um, but we have all the information we need now to access the API. So now I'm going to open up Postman and I'm just going to create a new tab. If you're not familiar with Postman, it's a way of interacting with APIs uh, in a graphical way. So you don't have to run command line or, and stuff and you can save settings in here. It's, it's really cool. Uh, so the URL uh, that basically every Trello API call starts with HTTPS colon slash slash uh, api.trello.com forward slash one forward slash and then whatever the specific uh, endpoint you want to access. So if I head over back into the documentation here, I'm actually gonna go to, let's see, where is it? It's towards the top, it's under reference. 
And then you can see there are three different sections here. There's the REST API, Power Ups, which I think Power Ups is new. I don't even remember seeing that when I was working on this before. And then the, the Skim API, which is more for enterprise integration type stuff. Uh, we will never get into that. I, I've never actually had any experience with that, so I don't even know. I don't know anything about it. But on the left-hand side, you can see here are all the different um, API endpoints you can actually hit to do a lot of things. So as I said, we're gonna just do a quick test and create a card here. So we're gonna head over to the Cards API. And you can see to create a new card, it's going to be an HTTP post request uh, to the basically just the cards endpoint. Um, and what what is really unique about the Trello API over many other APIs is even for I'd say most I don't want to say all endpoints, but most endpoints, everything is actually sent as a query parameter in the URL. So it's not actually sent as a post body, like as JSON or anything, which is which is kind of strange. Um, I don't fully understand why that decision was made from a design perspective, but you know that's how it is and that's how we're going to use it uh so you can also see underneath here there's a lot of there's a number of different fields uh that you can post in here uh the key and token are the only two required i'm sorry the key the token and the id list which was the the kanban columns are the only three fields that are required um but it's always good to include a name you could do a description you could set a due date uh there's a lot of different things you can go through here uh, so anyway, let's go ahead and I'm going to construct a URL and show you how that works. So if I come in here, uh, we know that cards is going to be the endpoint we're going to use. And then add a question mark to start adding URL parameters here. And we'll say key equals, and then I'm going to grab my key and paste that in there. And we're going to add an ampersand to chain on another query parameter. We'll say token equals, and then we're going to paste our token in there. Uh, and, and this is basically, again, we're going to use the key and the token for every single AP call, API call that's used. Um, and then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to put a name in here, which is the name of the card. Uh, actually, we're going to also add the list. So name, oh, we'll get the list. And I'm going to show you a quick trick on how you can actually get uh, unique identifiers for different entities within Trello. Uh, so head back into my board. So if I want to find out like what the what the this uh, ID is for this list on the left hand side here, right? I could go through the API and get go through the list endpoint and grab all the lists or go through boards and grab that. But the easy way that you can actually do is if you select any card that's part of the, the column that you want uh, under share, if you click export as JSON, you'll see you'll get the actual JSON payload for the card all nice and laid out. and Inside of here, there should be an ID list, which is there, which is the unique identifier for this list that you can use to reference. Uh, there's also ID board. Um, and then there's tons of other information in here that we're not gonna really be concerned about. So I'm gonna grab this ID list here and we're gonna head back into Postman and I'll add another ampersand so we could chain on a query parameter here, ID list equals, and then pass in that ID. And then last one we're gonna do is name equals, um, this is my test card, okay? And remember this is a post request so we're going to change this to a post and send that so you can see we got a 200 response here along with um, a lot of other information basically it, this is more or less the same information that we saw in that export um, that i just demonstrated a few minutes ago so now if i go back into my board you can see here is my test card this is the one that was created and uh, one of the other really neat things about Trello that I have not seen by a lot of other APIs is it's extremely fast and you do not need to refresh your page when making changes. So I'm going to make a little more space here and we're going to scoot this over so I can show you this like in action. You'll see how fast this thing works. So let's change the name of the card. Um, let's just say, look at how fast this is and hit uh, send. And you can see like before postman could actually receive the response and do anything with it the card appeared on the on inside of the list that we just we, we added it to so uh very responsive anything you do through the api happens almost instantly through the ui which is which is very impressive at least in my opinion if you like this video feel free to give it a like and share it out to your friends if you want to see more content like this subscribe to my channel for new videos every week if you're looking for help on an issue or just want to collaborate with other developers, be sure to join my Discord by clicking the fullstack.chat link in the description below or just enter it into your browser to join. Thank you so much and have a great day.